Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Intensity number seven. Revelation has been asked to provide two competitors to compete here in a tag team match against El Contrastico and Tanner Andrews. And it looks as though they have selected Darren Savior and Charlie Mack to represent Revelation here in this tag team match. Charlie Mack is an odd pick considering he is involved in a number one contendership triple threat match with Nick Bo and Luna Tank for D4's World Championship at Apocalypse here tonight in the main event. And here they are, ladies and gentlemen, El Contrastico and his captain, Tanner Andrews. Making their presence known here. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't wait to get this tag team bout underway. Did I fire? No, I fired. Now Contrastico is all jacked up and ready to go. Gentlemen, this is a tag team match. You have three breakups. After the third breakup, your partner is eliminated. Yeah. Elton tries to go confirming with the referee, not the referee, confirming the rules of this match. Did you remember who this time? No, I didn't. You have to watch. Do we have a round? Yes, we do. Do we have a run? Right there. Bring the run. Bring the run. Bring the run. Bring the run. Ladies and gentlemen, we yeah, just, yeah, we don't know. condone this on our, on our show. Oh, 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 oh. We, I don't know what's in that cup, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if indeed it is run, we... Tanner Andrews is over 21. Uh, El Contrastico. Let's just hope it's not rum in that cup. Ready? Ready? Let's get it on! And Tanner Andrews and Charlie Mack going to start this match for their respective teams. And they lock up collar and elbow. Charlie Mack able to take hold of the wrist and applying pressure to that arm and that socket, that shoulder, Tanner Andrews. Andrews with a snap mare on Charlie Mack. No big clothesline dropping the mercenary. <laughs> Oh, he tries to go hyping up his captain, and his captain vibing right now. Throwing Charlie Mack around, but Darren Savior gonna get thrown into the fire. And a super kick right to the side, beautiful super kick by Darren Savior, and a big senton. And Savior coming in here with some fire, with some edge. 
laying the smack down to Tanner Andrews here on intensity. Savior misses the drop kick. We saw him miss one of those on Emerge about a week ago, and it was not pretty. Tanner Andrews now taking control, taking advantage of that missed drop kick and planning the fallen angel. Savior able to muster the energy needed to kick out. And given what we saw last week on Next Level when Darren Savior and Chase Carnage faced off against D4 in that handicap match, I would assume that Chase Carnage would have been tagging with Darren Savior here tonight. So his whereabouts not being known to us as of right now, that's a question mark in my mind at least. I'm wondering, I'm wondering where is Chase Carnage because Charlie Mack is actually built in the main event, so risking injury and risking not being 100% for that match later on tonight. That's got to be problematic for Nick Alexander and the rest of Revelation, but Garrett Sager fighting back here and a kick to the back of the leg. And we know Tanner Andrews has had problems as the, the legs are just dropped right over the torso. And the crowd, dude, the crowd does not like Darren Savior. And they're letting him hear it right now. Raining booze upon him and, and chants. But... And El Contrastico tagged in. He's a little bottle of energy, a little stick of dynamite. Contrastico. There are methods to his madness more times than not a big kick to the chin of Darren Savior. Now the trying to rip that shirt right off. You don't understand. This is my house. This is nobody else's house. Name and clean. Wait till Babylon is banned. And Uncle Dresco talking smack to the intensity champion, Damon Free, even though he is actually on next level, not part of the intensity roster, and giving Darren Savior a buggy and a big back suplex backdrop there. And Dresco still feeling the effect, still really off that back suplex and I can't. And once again, Darren Savior missing that drop kick. Oh, and a Savior kick of his own. Elkin Trasco out here wheeling and dealing. Oh, and using the same senton that we know Darren Savior to use. And I don't think it's a coincidence at this point. We've seen him steal the false of Angel finishing maneuver to put Darren Savior away before. And the amount of disrespect that Kim Trasco is showing Darren Savior right now. Trasco making sure goes for a big send on Savior gets out of the way. Savior just able to escape there. And Trasco not trying to let him get to the other side to tag Charlie Mack in, but. His efforts are fruitless. And Charlie Mack. Charlie Mack is not appreciative. And here comes Contrast to go across the ring in a hurricane run. Contrastico is feeling it here in the battle round here tonight on intensity. Looking to put him away and there's a cartwheel kick to the side of the face. Contrastico needs to get to the cover. And looking to... Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we don't condone these acts here on our show. It, and the crowd telling El Trasco not to do it. Darren Savior having a confrontation and a roundhouse kick from Charlie Mack. 
in a big ride. Oh, and another roundhouse dropping. Oh, Contrastico. Contrastico may not know where he is right now. And this could definitely be the beginning of the end for El Contrastico. Charlie Mack has not King of Battle. Escapes. And Contrastico. Sunset flip lands it. And this could be it for Charlie Mack. Revelation. What a string of moves put together by the luchador of action wrestling entertainment. I feel you in better, yeah? I feel you in better? No swap, I feel like I do. I do. Crossbody? Swan down, crossbody. The crowd wants a swan time. The trash coach has crossbody and going for it. And no, Max catches, puts him over a modified of engagement. Come on, man. Count to a million. Two. And a kick out, I can't believe. Contrastico just able to kick out. And Sager gets tagged in. And stomping away is Darren Sager. Oh, and what a big senton across the back. Now Contrastico in a bad way, taking that rule of engagement and a savior kick, slumping over the luchador. And Contrastico. Contrastico, this could be the bitter end, and it's not. Kick out. And his captain, Tanner Andrews, has been out of the match for a hot minute, and he wants back in. But the fans want to see more of El Contrastico, and can you blame them, ladies and gentlemen, this performance? Oh, and a big knee to the side of him. And maybe he kicked him in the gut. Oh, and a super kick. Charlie Mack kissed the foot. Of El Contrastico. Oh, oh, Contrastico looking to set up some offense here. As he gets Darren Savior in position. What's he going for? Oh, and a two-step ball driver. Landing Darren Savior, and that is it. Charlie Mack was afraid Savior wouldn't be able to kick out, and I was afraid Savior wouldn't be able to kick out. Tag is made. Tanner Andrews is in, but let's talk about that tombstone powder. And the referee saying, yes, I did like that tombstone. And Savior went for a shoulder block, and just Andrews just got in the way. Now Contrastico trying to do some damage on the outside. And a big clothesline. Tanner Andrews is laying out the lariats here on intensity. And a kick to the inner thigh. I don't think Darren Sager has much to worry about in that department. Andrews going to town in the legs of the Fallen Angel. Charlie Mack. <laughs> and El Contrastico mocking Charlie Mack. Savior telling Andrews to get up. And a big fisherman delivered to Darren Savior via Tanner Andrews. <laughs> and Charlie Mack is getting up and to go. Delivering a kick. Hey, kick 
Tanner Angels continuing to work on the legs of Darren Sabner, but the action going on on the outside between Matt and El Contrastico is, is no pun intended, but it is next level. Then you'll see the light. Do you see the light? Okay, Open Traffic, the thing I love about Open Traffic is he always seems like he's having a great time. Even though he's only one in seven, at least he has a good time losing. And Savior, big splash. And Contrastico go using a breakup. Savior going to make the tag. Contrastico tagged in by Andrews and Mac and Contrastico are back in the match once again. And Contrastico charges at Mac. Mac gets out of the way and a snap. German holds on and a second German delivered from the mercenary. And Mac hanging on goes through. Dragon suplex not gonna get it. And Contrastico with a big again, turning the tide of this match in his favor. And the crowd still asking for a swanton. And Contrastico beating Charlie Mack. Contrastico lining it up and a swan time from Contrastico. This could be it. Charlie Mack had pulled a roll over. Contrastico in the cover. And Charlie Mack just kicks out. And Contrastico. The traffic of feeling that swanton as much as Charlie Mack is. Both men down and tired. Fatigue. And Darren Savior. Flinch! Contrastico goes for an overhead punch, and Charlie Mack has him up for something. Contrastico able to fight out, but Charlie Mack is persistent. He has him up. DDT from Contrastico. And both men are down at this juncture. And Contrastico desperately trying to make it over to his captain to make the tag, and he does. Contrastico, pardon me, Darren Savior, comes in with a drop kick and misses once again. Will he ever get a drop kick? I'm not sure. And a big throw. What a throw from Tanner Andrews. Tanner continuing the leg work, and if he keeps on at this pace, as Contrasto making his way across. And Contrastico and Charlie Mack playing rock, paper, scissors. Are you watching this shot? And the referee out of position. And Andrews kicked right in the middle of the back. Savior has all the momentum in this match. And what a match it's been so far. 
one would imagine that Revelation would have this in the bag, but at this point, I can't pick a winner. And now Darren Savior assaulting the lower body, the legs of Tanner Andrews. And Contrastico giving Tanner some more of what seems to be rum. Savior going for a code breaker and breaking all the codes. But Andrews able to able to stop him from tagging in and Contrastico now. Tags in. And Contrastico charging, flying, kicking the heads off of Revelation as he goes for the cover. And a kick out into a pen of his own. And Contrastico also kicking out. And the audience heavily, heavily interested in the Swanton Bomb Department wants a double swanton from Contrastico. And a knee trigger flat to the face. Charlie Mack, eight. Contrastico advising the referee not to count out Darren Savior for being in the ring for too long. Hey, I'm putting you on notice, D4. I haven't forgotten about what I promised that I would do to you. I will take you, I will bend you over, I will do other very harmful things to you and to the anatomy of your body. <laughs> I don't care. I know everybody thinks you're really tough stuff, but you're not. Watch this. And Contrastico taking the time to call out the world champion. He has no business in doing so. And charging up <laughs> double front time and misses. Maybe catches Darren Sager with the feet. Charlie Mack saying you took your time. And I agree. Contrastico took way too much time delivering a double swan ton. And Charlie Mack trying to pick up Contrastico. And Contrastico, big drop kick. And he's all fired up. And he's looking for. Maybe he's not. Maybe he goes for him. And Zakuri, but misses. Able to land. And able to get to the tag. And Trasco using all the misdirection that he needed in a shoulder block. And the crowd is terribly enthusiastic here tonight. And Tanner Andrews, I think that we know what he likes to do at this point. And a low blow from Charlie Mack. There's the referee. The referee had eyes on Contrastico. And Contrastico able to use his second breakup. Charlie Mack looking to finish this match. It's gone on for way too long in the mind of Charlie Mack. It should have been over in the first three minutes, according to him, as he has the face lock applied. And Tanner Andrews could be going to sleep right about now. And Trasco trying desperately to reach his hand out for his partner, for his captain. And Tanner Andrews able to roll it into a pin. Charlie Mack, the frustration is palpable. Tanner Andrews once again going for the clothesline. Loves the clotheslines. 
Charlie Mack reaching out to Contrastico. Yes, take his leg. Take all three of them. Take them all. Dropping the legs on the legs is Tanner Andrews. And Charlie Mack just got a receipt for the low blow that he delivered earlier to Tanner Andrews. And the, the, the audience tonight. The audience is. Uh, is saying stuff here tonight. No, not that one. It's the other one. Yeah. What? The 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 arm thing. What's it called? A line or something? Oh. Something about a line. Contrastico directing traffic wants Andrews to do a certain maneuver, and Charlie Mack just landed in a heap in a mess. Roll. And Contrastico looked as if he ran across so that Charlie Mack wouldn't get rope break, and yet Charlie Mack was able to get rope break. And Contrastico diving on Darren Savior, but landing in a landing in an awkward way himself. Contrastico going for a rules of engagement. It's Charlie Mack countering. It's only right that he would be able to counter in a headbutt. Knocking Contrastico into next week. And Mack able to tag in the fallen angel Darren Savior. Oh, and what a big move from Contrast to go, and a kick. Rolling into the cover. And Contrast go arguing with the ref. And Contrasco trying to get Darren Savior to say thrice. Can you do it? He's clearly not understanding the concept. Savior, what did I tell you for the match? Shut up and fight! Charlie Matt getting on to Darren Savior. And now Savior taking control of this match. And Andrews desperately calling for Contrasco to get up. But Charlie Mack delivering a drop kick to Andrews. And Contrasco still jelly legs right now. And Contrasco in a bad way right there with the backbreaker and the rules of engagement. And that will be all that she wrote. I'm almost certain. And it will. Looking at the replays, that super kick was devastating. And this Hurricane Rana from Elton Drastico, what a way to enter a match. Not to mention the flawless sunset flip. <laughs> Charlie Mack didn't know where he was after that. And the draft goes going for the crossbody, making a mistake here of allowing himself. 
to get taken down by the rules of engagement. Luckily, had the resilience to kick out. And watch this tombstone. What an odd, what an odd turn of events. We saw El Contrasco hit one of the most devastating moves in all of wrestling history, and they couldn't get the job done. And looking through the highlights, ladies and gentlemen, you see a lot of El Contrasco, and I think the story of this match is just, just that. It's, it was a lot of El Contrasco. A little bit of Tanner Andrews here and there, but inevitably, Captain Andrews and El Contrasco just aren't quite on the same page where they need to be yet. But neither on Revelation. Charlie Mack. You are a phony. Eh? Phony? Yeah. Oh, you're not any good. You suck. You suck balls. <laughs> Call him phony. Say phony. You but suck balls. You can trash them. Talking trash to Darren and save him. Right, and he's not even real tired. Look at him. He's fake tired. He's, he's fake. He's, 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 he's so real. And I'm a real luchador. That's our people think I'm not. Take that off. No. Oh. And Darren Savior has the bat in hand and talking to Tanner Andrews. Getting melee right now. I know you're a real tired. I'm just getting around. I don't know. You're just a dead pool one day. You're not. I never played. Ah. Darren Sanger. Just continue letting your per your partner get beat up there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this confrontation. This confrontation between Savior and Fantastico. Darren Savior going to town on the team of Contrastico and Andrews. Far from over between at least between Contrastico and Savior. But coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, it's King Neon, it's Tingu for number one contendership for the Intensity Championship at Apocalypse. I can't wait to see it. That match is next. Ladies and gentlemen, when you talk about the ones who started it, the ones who have been to the top of the mountain, they've scaled it, they've climbed it, they've claimed part of the legacy of this company, you have to mention King Neon. King Neon has been in these predicaments, he's been in these situations, number one contendership matches, He's won his fair share of them. Tonight, it looks to be no different for the King. King Neon, however, has never had to face Tengu one-on-one -on -one in the effect that he will have to face him tonight if he wants to challenge Damon Creek once again for that intensity championship. And Tengu. Tengu is an interesting character. He hasn't wrestled very often here in AWE. But when he has, things happen. <laughs> Tengu has won only two matches. However, 
He's already been in big moments. Face D4 in Jackson Palace for the world title at Clash 2. Tanger won the Redemption 5 way at Quest for Gold 2. And he has somewhat carried the momentum with him, however, since winning the five way. This match is an intensity rules match. And is for number one contendership for Damon Creed's intensity championship. No disqualification and falls count anywhere are in effect. Gentlemen, when you are ready, let this number one contender sit. And King Neon attacking early on in this match, but not even letting the announcer get his breath and announce the match. King Neon already assaulting Tingu and going for what looked to be a kill shot there from his rival, D4. And Tingu dropping Neon right on his forehead early on in this match. Neon kicks him in the knee. And looking to go for a rules of engagement is King Neon. Tingu kicked to the gut. Oh, and Tingu delivering the spike early in this match, and Neon looks shook it to say the least. And going for some sort of move there is Tingu, but Neon. Neon could be going back to Old Faithful here early. And a Neon bomb to Tingu, getting Tingu all the way up and all the way down, and only a, only a, a one count. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, King Neon is currently the number one contender for the Tag Team Championships. So whenever he gets his match for the Tag Team Championships, that's one title opportunity. He could win another one here and be guaranteed be locked in to face Damon Creed at Apocalypse in a few short weeks. Tengu has him up on the carry some own drop. And Tengu going for the cover and manages a two count on the king. Tengu measuring, you saw it last two, missing the elbow drop. King Neon had it well scouted. And now Neon. Going for one of his own elbow drop, piercing Tengu. And only a one count. And Neon, just as shocked as we are that Tengu was able to kick out so early from such a high impact move. King Neon, possibly scared, is it possible? These two competitors are both around the 250 pound mark, so when these two charge at each other, there's no telling who's going to fall, if anybody's going to fall. These two are on the bigger side here in Action Wrestling Entertainment in the formation of the team between Henry Mack and King Neon. That's probably going to be the biggest, the biggest threat to the titles held by Future Shock right now.
But if King Neon could win here, win at Apocalypse, and win the tag titles, he could be yeah. double champion like fly. Damon Creed is right now. And Tengu taking the chair and hitting King Neon. The cameraman needs to, there you go, get some lights on this action. And a chair right to the arm. Again? Tengu continuing the assault and a head bouncing off the concrete wall here at the battleground, and we call it the battleground for a reason. Super kick dropping Tengu. We call it the battleground because when the door closes, battle is set to ensue, to occur. And things are going to get destroyed. Tengu being ran into the wall right now by King Neon. King Neon pushed away by Tengu. And smacking the head into the side of the ring. And once again, and another one. Tengu could be going for something. Tengu slides into the cover and only garners a two count on the king. King Neon <laughs> asking Tengu what is wrong with him. Leg DDT. What you're seeing right now is two of the largest competitors in the game competing for a shot at Damon Creed. And I think no matter who wins, the elbow drop finally hitting for Tengu. No matter who wins this match. Damon Creed should be worried. You are not. Damon Creed narrowly escaped King Neon on intensity number five to retain his title. And he's yet to face off against Tengu one on one. And if you would have asked me a few months ago if I thought Tengu and King Neon would be having a competitive match with one another, I would have told you no. We knew very little about Tengu, but seeing the performances that he's been able to pull off in the past couple of matches he's been in, they really tell the story of just how good he can be. And Neon, looks like he delivered a spike to Tengu and Tengu went for a chop and a big knee to the, to the skull. And King Neon getting fired up, saliva salivating from the mouth. Wake up! Wake up! And if I were Tengu, I wouldn't want to wake up right now. Wake up. The king wake up. about to impose his will, his judgment upon Tengu. And a drop kick knocking the head off of Tengu. And ladies and gentlemen, remember falls count anywhere. No disqualification. We've already seen these two break out the weapons. But they can be pinned anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the construct, in, in the battleground. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be on solid ground. Those shoulders or on any surface for a count of three, and this match is over. Let's go. 
And take your diving and knocking Neon back, but Neon unfazed. And a back kick, rattling the hip. Tinger. And throwing the chair at Tingu, King Neon throwing the steel into the body. And Tingu just keeps charging. And maybe that's a horrible idea. Super kick into the chair. Tingu still feeling the effects of multiple chair shots to the midsection. And King Neon picking it up and smacking the back of Tengu. And I have an eerie feeling that these two aren't going to stay close to the ring any longer. King Neon wants to go backstage and the smoke machine being blown in the eyes and the face and choking out Tengu and a super kick to the gut from Neon. Neon going backstage. What? Neon light? What? Neon light? King Neon has that light bar in hand. This plug in, I can't take it anymore. I'm smacking Tengu in the wrist. But King Neon trying to get out of there while he still can, Tingu. Tingu said taking him to my world. shows himself finally as that bat was hiding under the ring and for a minute ladies and gentlemen I lost all communication I don't know what happened there I'm glad the technical difficulties are over but I was, as I was saying during the technical difficulty um, King Neon hiding from Tingu as he suplexes Tingu into the ring some strange things going on here in the battleground. And you see Darren Savior off in the corner. This matchup will have some sort of effect on the team of Revelation, I'm sure. Moving forward. Darren Sager out here to spectate and see who's able to win this in a ripcord. And Neon bringing that arm. Tengu still positioned. Tengu goes. Chaos Claw doesn't get a big slam from King Neon. And Neon desperately, desperately needs to pull out all the stops if he's going to be able to pin Tengu or submit Tengu here in this Intensity Rules match. And a super kick from, from Tengu. Big DDT dropping Tengu on his head.
think King Neon should have turned his back to Henry Mack. Oh my gosh, he pushed him off. What's he going for? There's a spear, a big spear from King Neon. And he could do it right here if he gets the three count. He could become the new AWE World Stunner from Henry Mack. Be reversed. Until now, we have a brand new AWE World Champion. He's going for the choke slam. Oh. What? Is that? It's Chris Davidson. Oh, he's Neon. Attacking. attacking. Neon. Oh. He go for the Neon bomb. Oh, it's in the tire. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. One, two, three. That's a three count. He's got the one up on him. He's still going with the piece off of me. He's wrong. I'm going to beat that stuff to this week. Wait, oh my goodness. I really want to touch this camera, man. This camera, man. Really well, now we know who the real pussy is. Damn! Steps up. Oh! Kill shot! Oh! Guys, what does this mean? Like, Mazzing position. What? No way. No way. Two! Three! Oh! What? Oh, oh my God. Neon, you best! Oh, oh King Neon, look behind you! Oh! Me. What a game! He says you got one more pay-per-view kill shot into the pan. I hope that Clay. My God, D4 just got power bomb. I'll tell you no. That's a tope on Elo. Kick me on try. He tried. No, not my commentary marker. No! Oh my god! One, two, three. Yeah. We're all teaming up for Bill and Vanessa Gus right here. Wait. Oh. Oh. And ladies and gentlemen, we're back. From commercial break, don't forget to go to our website, go to the Mighty Networks, and get yourself a silver, get yourself a gold membership, and watch the new pay-per-views as they come out. They will not be uploaded here to YouTube any longer. Apocalypse is in roughly two to three weeks, so be looking for it if you are a silver or gold member on there, and if you don't have the money to get those memberships as Tengu hits a Chaos Claw Slam. If you don't have the money, go get a bronze membership for free and join the conversation, join the community, join the family, and we'll see you over there. Tengu and King Neon are at their wits end right now, trying to figure out what else can be done. What else can they do to one another? What moves can they pull out of the bag of tricks? They've all, they've all been utilized. And I have a feeling we're getting close to the end here in this match with a big spike from Tengu. And all the momentum, all the control belongs to Tengu right now. And King Neon able to reverse into a small drop. And King Neon is amped right now. King Neon said, don't count it. I want something else. And King Neon, we know, we know that his moveset spans a lot of different techniques, a lot of different styles, has so many moves in the bag of tricks. And what else could he pull out here to pull out the stops and go face Damon Creed in a rematch at Apocalypse? King Neon going for a Chaos Claw. And Tengu, Tengu going for a Chaos Claw. And has Neon up, Neon with an elbow, able to fight out. And Tengu and Neon evenly matched, it seems. Neon charging in shoulder block. Tengu wants another. 
And Tengu wants another one and sends Neon careening into the mat back first and laying into the cover. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think you realize just how much impact it takes to knock someone like King Neon from a standing position to a lying down one. It takes a lot of effort. Tengu going after the chair. That chair is said to have won a lot of matches for a lot of people over the course of this company's existence. They did it for Don Grayson against King Neon. And now Tengu, he's done his homework. He's done everything he needs to to prepare for this match. And he sees no other option. But will it lead Tengu to the promised land like it led Don Grayson there so many months ago? Tengu setting up chaos, claw on the chair, and kiss your dreams goodnight, King Neon. And a kick out at two and a half. And King Neon isn't kissing anything goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, if that doesn't put King Neon away, I don't know what else Tengu has. I don't know what else he can do. Both men have exhausted their resources. They've exhausted themselves. They've done about all they can do. And now it comes down to wheelbound, spinning mule kick from King Neon. Tengu able to get the shoulders up at one this late in the match. And D4 is going to have a challenger crown here tonight, a number one contender crown right after this match. But by God, I think Damon Creed is going to have one hell of a challenge no matter which one of these two challenges him at Apocalypse. Either of these, both of these men, one of them has held the world title and one of them has put up one hell of a fight for the world title. So that intensity championship is not going to be an easy title to get your hands on as King Neon eats a fisherman from Tengu. And you can tell the wheels are turning in both of these men's brains, their minds. But more importantly, if these two continue at the rate that they're at, Damon Creed won't have much of a challenger left. No matter, depending on who walks out of here, and getting me on able to draw up and steal one. And Tango able to kick out at two. We saw Cody Cole steal a victory over Darren Savior on Emerge number one. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Cody Cole becoming the second ever dual champion. Neon. Goes for a spear and just speared a brick wall is what he did. Tengu, a kick to the midsection. Could be going for another DDT or something of the sort. And King Neon able to fight out. Tengu staring down the king. Neon pushing him away, getting some separation and putting the dagger into the gut, into the diaphragm. The spear taking down Tengu and setting up whatever King Neon has planned next. Not much as a knee and a spike. And King Neon 
King Neon has no base anymore. He got the spike kick out against the Chaos Ball. What a deadly combination. And this could be the end for King Neon. And it will be. Tengu is the new number one contender and going to face Damon Creed at Apocalypse for that intensity championship. Watch this. What a big, that is a big thing that you are powerbombing right now. And likewise, on the other side, King Neon getting thrown around. And these two, these two genuinely pulled out everything that they had on one another. The flying elbows, the drop kicks, the super kicks, the chairs, the white bars. Tengu, Tengu landed him on his chair with the Chaos Claw. And I was so surprised that Neon was able to kick out. And watch this spear, a hellacious spear. Watch this. Putting Tanner down, or so we thought, but that, that spike, and then the Chaos Claw coming directly after it, that would seal the deal for King Neon. <laughs> and the match is set at Apocalypse. It's Tengu, it's Damon Creed for the Intensity Championship. It's only on our Mighty Network's silver and gold membership plan. So go get you one if you want to watch that match. What the hell was that? I was working out. No, not that. Ah, that. That tag team tag match. match. Yeah. You made me look like a fool out there, Savior. You're buying into them, selling into their, trolling you, trying to make you look like a fool, which in turn makes me look like a fool, makes Nick Alexander look like a fool. And Chase Carnes look like a fool, too. He's got one. Yeah, but he wasn't here tonight. That's why I was out there with you. So I've, I've got something for you. What? Here, call Chase Carnage. I've got a triple threat match to get ready for, for number one contender. So you two better have my back. And Charlie Mack put it as directly as possible to Darren Savior. Number one contender, triple threat. Nick Bo, Luna Tank, Charlie Mack. One of these three men is gonna face D4 at Apocalypse on the Mighty Networks on our website, and you're not gonna wanna miss that. I mean, Nick Bo coming in here, he's he's one of the most dominant competitors. He's up there with Ghost. He's up there with Lunatank. Some say better than Lunatank, others say not. That's something I'd keep an eye on moving forward. I think the underdog in this match has to be Charlie Mack, or at least it would be if not for Revelation, if not for Nick Alexander, the Bulletproof. If not for Chase Carnage, the Jester, the Fallen Angel, Darren Savior. If not for those three, that this man right here, he would be the underdog. He would be the odds on underdog. And I don't think he would stand much of a chance against Nick Bo or Lunatank. Nick Bo's only defeat, he's only ever lost twice in his career. And those two losses come at the hands of Ghost and Damon Creed. And both of those men have not lost a match in year two. But Charlie Mack, picking up that win in the tag team match earlier, it leaves him at five and four heading into this match. That is not a bad record at all. Over 500 and looking to advance to six and four.
But now out comes Luna Tank. Luna Tank. Maybe having some difficulty getting getting out here. The lights have yet to come on. What's Luna Tank? Such a pussy. Come out. And the lights went back off. As Nigbo was talking all that trash, and Charlie Mack is taken out of the ring. And ladies and gentlemen, Luna Tank is at the battleground after all. And Nigbo and Luna Tank and Charlie Mack, this match is already underway. And a big right hand across the face of Nigbo. These three, one of these three, are going to face D4 at Apocalypse. And D4 is going to have one hell of a challenge in any three of these men. Nick Bell and Lunatank, they would hold the significant strength advantage, whereas Charlie Mack would hold off the obvious numbers game advantage and size advantage. Gentlemen. When you're ready, Luna Tank, let this uh, triple threat number one contenders match begin. Charlie Mack upset. And Luna Tank not showing any respect, slapping Charlie Mack across the face and Nick Bo giving him some shots to the ribs. Luna Tank throwing Nick Bo into the wall. And the one thing I can say about all three of the men that are in this match is that each and every one of them are all business. Not a single one of them is going to mess around. Is going to mess around for any reason. As Luna Tank takes the chair to the back of Charlie Mack, he's been known to do things with steel chairs and other foreign objects to inflict as much pain as possible upon his opponents. Throws the chair up, but Nick Bo able to catch and hits Luna Tank on top of the head twice. And Luna Tank unfazed and just throws the chair. And Luna Tank and Nick Bo lock up collar and elbow, and this is a matchup that many have been vying for. Many want to see these two go at it, and we got a taste of it at the Clash 2 event, but we wanted more, and so ladies and gentlemen, One, you two. have gotten more. And a kick out from Nick Bo. These two have fantastic backgrounds in amateur One. wrestling, and you're gonna see a lot of that when these two go to town and go to work on each other. But I think more than the amateur skills, the background in high school and collegiate wrestling, I think you're gonna find that these two like to inflict pain using objects, using weapons. His shoulder is not down. Loon tank. Nikbo still has that arm. And Luna tank able to pick up every pound of, of Nick Bo, and that is a big frame. Luna Tank packs a punch, but he's only about 5'11". Nick Bo stands at about 6'2 and a half, 6'3", as does Charlie Mack. This is, this is big time contender. These are big time contenders for the world title. Luna Tank. I don't think Charlie Mack, like I said earlier, I don't think he stands a chance 
I don't think he stands a snowball's chance in hell in this match if Revelation doesn't somehow get involved or if he doesn't just absolutely steal one I don't think he'll be going to face D4 Apocalypse Nick Bow and Charlie Mack lock up. And Nick Bow plants him right on his head and going for a cover. One, two. Just able to get the right shoulder up. But now Lunatank is back on the attack, and I think there's some camaraderie going on between Nick Bow and Lunatank. Some sportsmanship, some showmanship. Trying to one up one another using Charlie Mack as their test dummy, so to speak. And Nick Bo could be going for an early Tennessee lullaby here in this match. But a German suplex sends Nick Bo across the ring. Charlie Mack also with, an, with a background in amateur wrestling. So, so any three of these competitors actually, any three of these competitors could go toe to toe with one another if they were on a mat. And a big single leg drop kick from Nick Bow sending Luna Tank. Lunatank rolls into a cover on Charlie Mack. And Nick Bo hammering away at the bat. And I think we're going to see a lot of this Lunatank versus Nick Bo, them trying to see who is truly the toughest SOB in the business. I think you're going to see a lot of that here in this triple threat. As these two lock up in a variety of ways, and Luna Tank, it's all legal. Luna Tank, with the experience over Nick Bo, some people say it is criminal, absolutely criminal, that Luna Tank is not a champion here in this company. He was so close to being world champion at Quest for Gold against King Neon in that Iron Man match before Chris Davidson came out and screwed him. Speaking of Chris Davidson, since Clash 2, he's been quiet and he was quiet before Clash 2, but I think we could be seeing more of Chris Davidson here in the coming weeks and maybe even at Apocalypse if he's put on the card. Chris Davidson, though, is very, very, I mean, his record is, is astounding right now. I believe he sits at a three and two record, which is the, the equivalent of what King Neon was at Charlie coming Mack, into Smith. his number one contendership yeah. match. <laughs> Nick Bo taking the chair to the spine doing chiropractic without a license. Charlie Mack measuring to be going for one of those patented roundhouse kicks. Lunatank able to take the boot of Nick Bow off. And unfazed by the kick, but not that kick. He ate that one. He ate that one like it's Chinese food. And <laughs> Lunatank back to his feet. I, I haven't seen Lunatank on the ground for the majority of this match. But he's been he's been up and at him, getting at these other two, and and just being a pestilence, and a big boot across the face. 
And Charlie Mack misses the kick, it looks like. Lunatank able to use that boot to its maximum potential. Charlie Mack looks like maybe he got a low blow in. Anything. One, two. Ladies and gentlemen, the, there are no rope breaks. The thing that there no disqualification match. The thing. Tank. Anything. anything. The thing about this match is whoever wins this is facing D4 for the world title. And it's an, it's an intensity rule of match, so I think whoever wins this definitely holds the advantage over the world champion what? given the notice, given the nature of the show that they're on, intensity, always doing these stipulation type matches and next level just doing more wrestling. But One, two, whoever wins this one. Is going to be able to wrestle One, two, amateur style wrestle out wrestle one, D4, two, so to speak. Three. Any one of these three, and then if you if you put Charlie Mack, you know, if you predict that Charlie Mack wins, he has three soldiers ready to just have at D4 at any point in time, and it's all legal and false count anywhere. And it's you know it's. If you're D4 right now, you, you've got to be watching this and you've got to be thinking to yourself, I, I hope they all, I hope none of them win. I hope they all just get knocked out simultaneously and and I don't have to face any one of these three men. But one, Nickbo able to counter two, into a pin. One. Lunatank into a pin as well. The Lunatank has managed to get both of the boots off of Nickbo here. And trying to lock in, trying Nick to Bo lock in a face lock. Nick Bo trying to keep the pressure off. Nick Bo could be lights out right now. And Lunatank threw the boot across the battleground at Charlie Mack. And he has Nick Bo draped in a precarious position and clubbing the chest. Absolutely demolishing Nick Bo right now. And he grabbed the chair and hitting Nick Bo in the neck and in the jaw. And now in the back. Come on. And it's odd that we still haven't seen Destroyed Nick Alexander, Darren Nick Savior, Bobby. or Chase Connor Jr. in this match, given the fact that That's we at one. least know that Darren That's Savior is here tonight backstage, and Charlie Mack could Bro. have had this match. Bro. One, if if those three just had come out here and and took care of the took care of the light work, so to speak, for him. And all three men right now trying to stand their ground, trying to play it smart, play it safe, for time to give themselves a bid to, to go face D4 at Apocalypse. Charlie Mack handing a weapon to Nick Bow. Odd strategy there. Luna tank with Charlie Max bat in hand and swing and a miss. Strike one. Luna tank making solid contact with the chair. 
And they both slide in that chair and hitting the shins and the ankles. Lunatic throws, disperses of the of the the bat and just throws the chair, the patented chair throw at the legs. And now throws the chair at Charlie Mack. It could be gone for a choke slam. Doesn't get the choke slam. And now Nickbo just wrestling Luna Tank down to the ground. What? These two just jockeying for position. Trying to see which of them is the alpha. Luna Tank taking out the base of Nickbo. And that chair that was thrown could be, could have done a little bit more damage than we thought. And it just, Nickbo just put right on his One, neck, right on his two. head. Charlie Mack was clearly worried that he was not going to be able to kick out. Charlie Mack is, is easily the most experienced in, in this match, not in AWE, but in backyard wrestling in, in general. Charlie Mack with years of experience under his belt, Luna Tank with, with about a year and a half, almost two, and Nickbo, uh, as a choke slam lands there for Luna Tank, and if Nickbo is not careful, here comes, here comes Revelation, Chase Carnage, not not to be found, but Nick Alexander and Lunatank, these two, these two go way back. These two go back all the way to the first episode of Next Level. These two are OGs, and actually the last match that Nick Alexander ever wrestled was against Lunatank for number one contendership. Nick Alexander won that match, so, you know, if Nick Alexander was on intensity, we could see a rematch, but here, and what defense, what defense played by Luna Tank, not allowing Charlie Mack to hit rules of engagement. He's done his homework, he's been scouting and fighting back. The assault by Revelation is probably far from over. I mean, that they... They came out here and, and there's no qualifications. They're probably going to try and take care of Nickbo now and come on back to Luna Tank in just a second, probably. Charlie Mack smashing the head, and Nickbo comes out of nowhere in a Fez press on Charlie Mack. And the chair taken, and now the kendo stick. And Revelation is just cleaning up shop with Luna Tank and with Nickbo and a rules of engagement on Nickbo, not Nickbo, on Luna Tank. And now rules of engagement on Nickbo after the chair shot, after the kendo stick, after one, the assault by two, Revelation. Three. And Charlie Mack is your new number one contender going to face D4 at Apocalypse on the Mighty Network's website. Charlie Mack missed the roundhouse, and Lunatank made him pay with a devastating choke slam, driving him through the bottom of the, the mat. And if not for Revelation, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think Charlie Mack would be in the position that he is in right now, heading into Apocalypse. One, two, three. Since I come into this company, I fought and scratched my way to get to where I am today. Number one rookie draft pick. The most talented rookie prospect. First pay-per-view show went up against 
Atlas Liger. Sorry, I'm not calling you Damon Creed. You're always gonna be Atlas Liger. Always one rung lower than the mercenary Charlie Matt. That being said, D4, I see you got your two little uh, bodyguards out here to try to do away with me. But my boy's here, waiting in the shadows to give you that revelation. And come apocalypse, you'll see why. You say you're the predator, but mercenaries, we hunt the most dangerous game of all. We're the true number one predators there are. So at Apocalypse, you'll see why the predator becomes the prey. Bold statement. Hey, no true words ever been spoken. And that is Revelation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's official, D4, Charlie Mack for the AWE World Championship in an Intensity World match at Apocalypse. If you want to watch that, you're going to have to download Mighty Networks app or visit our website directly and get a silver, get a gold membership and watch that. It's only $5 a month. It's not asking a lot. You're going to get that and you're going to get so much more. But for right now, thank you for watching Intensity number 7. Chaos, follow that subscribe button. We'll see you next time for the next level.